Hey guys, it's Michael and Christina, and this is week 16 of our vlog series, How to Plan for 12 Months of Travel, and this week we're talking about safety and security. Safety and security, one of the questions that has been posed to us many times over by some of our friends and some of our family members. What do we do in case we lose our wallet? What do we do in case we lose our passport? What happens if we get robbed, we lose a bag? All these things that could happen, how do we prevent them from happening? Well, there's not a whole lot we can do, but we can try to set ourselves up so that if something does happen, we have a backup plan. It also changes the way that we do travel so that keeping safety and security in mind impacts the way that we're walking through a market or through a community. Yeah, a little bit of awareness goes a long way. What are we doing for our source of money and our credit cards? So this is something that we've thought long and hard about. Traveling with a bunch of cash is not wise. We'll have debit cards that we can essentially withdraw whenever we get to a city, and especially with the local currency, with it changing so much from country to country, withdrawing at ATMs is the way to go. In terms of our debit cards and credit cards, we're gonna make sure to have a couple cards so that yeah, if our wallet gets stolen, if our bag gets stolen, if we lose it, we will have a couple backups. Keep them in different locations. In our bags will be key. So Michael will have one credit card and one debit card, and I'll have one credit card and one debit card. In different bags. Yeah. So we'll have our actual travel bag, and then we'll have smaller bags. So we'll separate them, make sure they're in different packs. If we lose one bag, we just make sure we cancel that card, and we rely on one of the other ones. Our passport precautions are pretty simple. Because of the fact that we have our bag that has an RFID sleeve in it, when it's in our bag, we're actually safe. We don't have to worry too much a whole lot. So RFID essentially is when someone comes, and this has been a common technique of stealing one's identity, is that they come with a scanner next to your bag and they scan whatever document it is, whether it's a passport or a credit card. And so having an RFID safe pocket in our nomadic travel bag is really awesome. And that also has a lock that it comes with so we can lock our passport. And every time we go to a new country, what we're gonna do is register with the embassy so that they know, or the Canadian embassy, so that they know that we're in the country in case there's some sort of uh, national emergency or some sort of crazy event that happens so they know to look for us. And we can do that online, which is pretty easy. We'll be staying predominantly in hostels when we go to visit different countries, lockers, or um, small little cabinets that kind of lock will be important so that we can stick our valuables in there if we go on a day trip. We can even stick our big travel pack if we're Absolutely. nervous about our favorite bathing suit being stolen or something like that. The important things. We'll make sure to bring a hefty lock for that, uh, that travel locker. Another precaution for our passports or credit cards or debit cards or any identification that we have we're going to actually take a photocopy scan of it, make a digital copy, send it to ourselves by email, print a copy and actually slide a piece of paper somewhere in our bag or hide it in our bag in case we need to access the numbers. Also, we're gonna send it to our parents or family member back home so that for whatever reason we can't access those first two, they can send it to us call either them. by email or we can <laughs> call them and they can give us the information. An old trick that my mom set me up with when I started traveling is sticking a US emergency cash bill in my bag and she would always stick it there with a little note that said don't touch this unless there's an emergency. It is a great trick and one that we haven't always <laughs> Follow? Do you want we to tell them We haven't Nicaragua? implemented it yet. One time when we were in Nicaragua, we took a taxi after crossing the border into Nicaragua, and we actually didn't have enough cash to pay for the taxi. We like didn't calculate, and we had to pay the fees at the border, and then the customs, and we ran out of cash. We negotiated with the taxi driver, and he agreed to take us to the location, and then we'd go to the bank and actually access funds and pay him that way. Once we got to the city of Granada, we tried multiple cards to get into the actual bank or the ATM to get money and none of them worked. So we had to try another bank and finally one of our cards actually ended up working and we're able to pay the man. It was a really stressful situation and I think we learned our lesson to go back to mom's old trick of keeping an emergency US 
cash dollar bill hidden in our bag somewhere. We'll each have one. Yeah, it'll just be part of our bag. We, we'll try not to touch it at all, yeah. We haven't yet gotten our day packs. We'll be strategically choosing them so that they are not easily accessible. So when we're walking in the markets, when we're walking in really packed cities or we're in crowds. a, yeah, crowds, a subway, something like that, that it's not easily accessible. Michael will likely have a camera bag on him and so that having a back zipper. It'll be accessed through the back. So you can't actually get it until you take it off our back. Which is really awesome. And then I'll have a day pack as well, which is not easily accessed. And one really awesome trick that I like is to have a carabiner that you actually carabiner the two zippers shut. So it's kind of that one extra step. That's a smart move, I didn't know that one. Yeah. That's good. Last but not least, the one thing that we really wanna focus on is be incognito. We don't really wanna stand out. We're not looking to be flashy. We're not gonna be loud. We're not gonna try to make a big robust scene anywhere we go. We kinda of wanna blend in as much as possible. Fortunately, the travel bags that we've chosen have given us that ability to blend in. They're black, they're plain, they're not shaped or it's you not know. those big hiking backpacks yeah, that you kind simple. of like roll off the bus or the plane and it's like, oh my gosh, they're the travelers. So it's a little bit more low key. Yeah, we don't want to draw any unnecessary attention to ourselves. We're not going to be walking around with our cameras, you know, taking pictures of everything. We want to be as much mindful as possible when we travel and being very aware of where we are and being respectful to the people that actually live in the places that we're visiting. Overall, being able to trust your gut is key when you travel. We've been fortunate that our parents both instilled in us the sense of just, yeah, listening to your intuition. And that's something that we do when we travel, being aware of your surroundings, like Michael said, but yeah, that gut will, will save you from some pretty rough situations. It's okay to take the risks every once in a while, but ultimately your gut's gonna save you in the end. Yeah. If you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, check us out at Journey of a Compass. And we post, yeah, everything. Fun pictures of what we're up to and how we're preparing on a weekly basis. And when we're on the road, there's going to be tons of good stuff on there as well. So if you haven't followed us yet, I suggest following us now so that you have it for later on. And we're fun. And we're fun. <laughs>